The Squid Game. Wow, there's a lot to unpack. If you're unaware, it's a very popular Netflix TV show. It managed to attract over 111 million fans and people absolutely love it. And it shows that there is hope for the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, it's not coming from the West. It's actually coming from Asia. We got a lot of popular Japanese shows. We got a lot of popular South Korean shows. And they're starting to do to American shows what manga is doing uh, to comic books. So that's interesting. And there's a lot of cope going on. If you go on Twitter, you'll see a lot of people saying that the reason Squid Games is actually popular is because it's woke and diverse. And uh, anyone who watches it knows there's no diversity. I mean, 99.9% of the characters are Koreans. Um, and not only that, there's just one person that happens to be black, but he actually fits into the story. He's an immigrant from Pakistan, and he goes to South Korea, and he's being uh, shafted by his boss, who refuses to pay him. So it's not forced diversity in any way. Um, he actually fits within the story, creates interesting background for the character. The women there, they're not more powerful or more competent than men. Uh, they don't seem to be Mary Sue's, like um, always brave in the face of danger and not experiencing hardships. So it's rubbish. The concept that uh, Squid Games is a woke TV show doesn't hold up. It's just good entertainment. But another thing which a lot of people are pointing out is that it's a critique to capitalism. And I really don't know why. I mean, it seems that there are some individuals, especially movie critics, who don't seem to understand what capitalism is. Capitalism is the simple fact that people are allowed to sell their labor. And you have a free market. That's it. The idea that there's wealth inequality, that happens in every single system. If you say that, oh, the squid game is criticizing wealth inequality, well, I can say it's a critique to monarchy. Or that it's a critique to tribalism because the village chief and the village shaman, they have the best tent compared to everyone else. So it's ridiculous. Every single system in the world has wealth inequality. And I find it absolutely hilarious that you have one of the most unequal systems in the world, which is North Korea, uh, now criticizing and, and saying that, oh, yes, this South Korean movie actually shows just how bad it is in South Korea. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, you do realize that people in North Korea would be locked up in prison if they're caught watching this show? Like, they're not allowed to watch it because it's foreign propaganda. They're not allowed to watch anything outside of North Korea. And the fact that this representative, this spokesperson for North Korea managed to see the movie gets to actually show the inequality that goes in North Korea, where some people are better than others. They are even allowed to see a movie without going to prison, while the rest of the people have to go to prison. So there's that. I mean... There, there was a scandal, I believe, a couple of years ago where uh, there was an entire underground movement in North Korea with people selling CDs at the time with American TV shows like Friends and other American things. And this also existed in my country under socialism. And people were harshly punished if they were found trafficking these things. So I, I find it bizarre that a person from North Korea is criticizing South Korea for inequality. Um, if you know anything about Milton Friedman, he actually said that some of the most unequal systems in the world are the ones that are heavily controlled. So prisons, um, and in this case, socialist nations, where the government is very concerned about every aspect of a person's life. So no, it's, it's absolutely bizarre. I don't think that Squid Game is a critique of capitalism. I, I do think that Squid Game, though, is a critique of uh, class inequality where the very wealthy can get away with breaking laws and do whatever they want. And people who are poor and desperate, um, they can end up losing their humanity. And it can happen that a person who just wants to have a better life doesn't care about how many people he's willing to step on in order to achieve that prize. But what, what the most important thing Squid Game is saying is that it's a white pill. It's not really a black pill. It shows that there is humanity, even though like the overwhelming amount of people would probably not hesitate to step on others in order to win the prize. 
there are certain individuals that do care about their fellow men. There are certain individuals that do not want to take the blood money. So I think that that is the actual essence of the film. It's that the humanity exists and it manages to prevail even in the darkest systems. And there is hope at the end of the day. Especially in the final scene where... Uh, minor, very, very minor spoilers, but in the minor scene where uh, the police actually helps the drunken guy and someone uh, manages to give him help, uh, showing the rich guy that he did not understand the world and he does not understand humanity. But anyway, Rolling Stones, you know, they make these articles and they're like, oh, well, it's fair enough that uh, the Squid Game is criticizing South Korea capitalism, which, in my opinion, it's not, but Okay, or, or if it does, it does a poor job because you can apply this to literally anything else. I mean, you can have a medieval society where the king throws uh, some pork chop at the peasants and, and they're fighting with each other in order to manage to get that piece of meat. I mean, you, you, you can apply that to any other society that's poor or that has wealth inequality. But at the end of the day, they point out North Korea is not exactly a bastion of equality and justice. Free of one's suffering and exploitation, its own autocratic rulers live lavishly while much of the country struggles in poverty and famine. So at least they point that out. My opinion is that this is human nature. I mean, you're not going to have any example of a society throughout history where you don't have wealth inequality, where the people in charge don't live much better than everyone else. And I don't think that this is it. Like, I, I don't think the experts have managed to understand what the Squid Games are about. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Oh, and, and, and by the way, by the way, if anything, it's actually more of a critique to the Roman gladiatorial era, if I'm thinking about it. People would spend money to go into coliseums and watch other people murder each other for entertainment. I think there there's a part of human nature where... You know, individuals, they have empathy and they have compassion. But when you have the masses, when you have groups of people, then things start to differ. I think Thomas Sowell actually said this. I hope I'm not misquoting him. But he's the one that said that individuals are rational, but the masses are irrational. Like some of the most irrational things on earth you're going to find with the masses. Things that if an individual would believe, you'd put him in a madhouse. And I think that's uh, kind of what we get to see today in a lot of contexts. But yeah, all in all, uh, Squid Games is a pleasant surprise. I think it's the most binge-watchable show that I have seen in recent years. It's very well made, and it comes after a long list of successful South Korean films. So all I can hope is that South Korea keeps delivering more good stuff, and that they manage to provide some entertainment under this very difficult drought that we're having right now with very little things that are interesting to watch or even remotely good. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.